and yes. So we are going to talk about a subject and this subject is automobile engineering. Automobile engineering is very important with respect to day to day life because this is the branch of engineering of which we usually see the application in day to day life. At the same time, it gives us insight about what are different advancements as far as automobile engineering is concerned. So this subject, while covering this subject, we are going to discuss many aspects starting from the introduction and current state of automobile engineering to the individual systems of automobile engineering and we are going to talk about all those systems in detail starting with their construction till their design. So in this first lecture we are going to give you an introduction about automobile and many of you might be knowing about uh, all, uh, basics of automobile engineering. I assume that you know about the basics of automobile. For example, if I say that you have already read about different types of cycles, classifications of different types of automobiles, I give you an example. The automobile is classified as whether it is a spark ignition or a compression ignition. So we call this as an SI engine or CI engine. SI engine is generally gasoline based, petrol based, whereas CI engines are diesel based. The technology of burning fuel is different. In CI engine, we burn this fuel because of auto ignition due to compression at the same time we burn in case of petrol engine the fuel by igniting it with the help of a spark plug similarly we classify the automobile whether it is a two stroke or four stroke so you know that to convert fuel energy into a mechanical work lot of processes thermodynamic processes take place and if all these thermodynamic processes are completed in one revolution of crank, crankshaft then it is called two stroke if it is if all the processes are completed in two revolution of the crankshaft or four stroke of the piston then it is called as four stroke we know that four stroke engine do give you better mileage because in two revolution of crankshaft there is injection there is burning of the fuel uh, for one time whereas in case of two stroke engine in each revolution of the crankshaft there is burning of the fuel so two stroke engines are more powerful cooling is a problem in two stroke engine uh, and at the same time the mileage is also less whereas in case of petrol uh, four stroke engine the mileage is good the cooling is not a big problem at the same time the power as far as the power is concerned it does give you low brake power in comparison to two stroke engine with a few with the same fuel capacity yeah. so all having all these basic knowledge let me come down directly to uh, different types of systems related to automobile okay. so uh, we must have to talk about what are different components we use in automobile the main units of uh, automobile are the basic structure the power plant 
power plant is nothing but where the power is generated. So we call engine, IC engine, which is called as internal combustion engine, as a power plant. Then the power which is being generated is need uh, is required to be transmitted to the wheels. So there is a transmission system number three. Then we have to use for control for better functioning of the whole system we need some auxiliaries. Auxiliaries would include other components like cooling, like oiling. So all those auxiliaries for the uh, efficient working of automobile required. Then the fifth component is control. So we have to break the break the automobile, we have to stop the automobile with a specified distance. At the same time, we have to accelerate the, the automobile, we have to sometimes decelerate the automobile. So all those controls are required. And finally, the superstructure, the body, how the structure is being made, that becomes the sixth component. Okay. So in this complete course, we are going to talk about all these components. We will go into the details of these components starting from their construction to their designing and uh, at the end of the course we will be able to understand the basics of automobile, working of automobile at the same time we would have a basic initial knowledge of designing of automobile as well. So let me give you a basic a brief introduction about each of the components which we have talked about. So the first component is called as basic structure and the basic structure has got uh, it is the structure which on which the remaining units are installed okay? and uh, remaining units are installed like transmission, engine and body etc. Okay? And all these uh, additional components are installed on this basic structure and this basic structure consists of frame, suspension system, axles and wheels. You might have seen frames, different types of frames in automobile. One of such frames, uh, there is a classification of different types of frames being used one such frame is called as one such types of the frame is called as conventional frames in conventional frames the automobile is made in such a way that the body of automobile is separate than uh, the frame okay? or in other words i would say that the frame is not an integral part of the body so first the frame is manufactured and on the frame the body of the automobile is installed with the help of bolts and nuts okay so this is this is called as conventional frames and generally this type of uh, construction uh, conventional frames is being used where uh, the automobile is supposed to take heavy loads like trucks and buses where they are not made as integral integral part the, the, the frame and, uh, frame and uh, body is not made an integral part. Okay? So this is one type of uh, frame which is called as conventional frame. Here in this diagram you would see that this automobile has got the structure which is called as frame. And on this frame, there are other components installed like steering system, like gearbox, gearbox, like engine, like suspension system. On the rear wheel, there is a differential gearbox which is being installed, and the space which is remaining, which is being used to carry the luggage. Okay. The second type of frame which is being used is called as frameless structure. In frameless structure, the body and the frame are one part. They are welded. They become an integral part. And this type of structure is called as frameless structure. 
So frameless structure generally provides us more space. Okay. At the same time, it is being used, commonly being used in closed cars. If the car is open without any top, the structure is not, the frame is not frameless because the major part of the load being carried in the frameless structure would be by these beams. So if the car or the vehicle is topless, in that case, this beam would not be able to, this beam is not going to be there and therefore there, the strength of the vehicle would decrease. So in open cars, we have to use conventional, uh, conventional uh, frame rather than frameless structure. Now another part of the suspension of the basic structure is called as suspension system. Now you all know about why do we use suspension in an automobile and this suspension system has got func some functions uh, and these functions are a suspension system is supposed to prevent road shocks to be transmitted. Generally, when automobile, uh, when uh, it carries some load, because of the transmission of the shocks from the road, the road shocks are borne by uh, the tires, and this suspension system should not transmit the shocks which are borne by the tire to rest of the part of the automobile for example frame or uh, the body of the automobile so the first function suspension system need to prevent is uh, the road shocks and another important function which uh, suspension system is supposed to perform is stability of vehicles Okay. So while taking turn, your suspension should uh, system should be effective enough to provide you the stability. Based on these two functions, there are two types of suspension systems are commonly used. One is called as rigid type, where the suspension system is installed on a rigid shaft which is called as axle. Both front axle and the rear axle are the solid shafts and where the two tires connected on the axle are not independent. It means that if the shock is coming on this tire because of the solid connection between the two tires the shock will be transmitted to this, this wheel as well. So there is no independency in terms of you know transmitting or absorbing the shock uh, by one beam. So this type of uh, suspension system would be called as rigid type. Whereas the second type, the latest suspension system which is called as independent type in which wheels are free to move vertically without any, having any effect on other wheel. So they are independent, they are not connected by solid shafts. So here if you see that this wheel is not connected to this wheel by using a solid shaft. This or this wheel is independent to this wheel. So if, if, if you see in this diagram, in this picture, this wheel when subjected under some bump on the road, deflects upward or it shifted upward, whereas the positions of the other three wheels remain the same on the ground. Okay? So this is an independent suspension system. It provide, provides more stability to the vehicle. The third important part of uh, basic structure is axles, and you you might have you might have seen in case of this this part is called as an axle. Okay. And similarly on the back side there would be an axle or 
this is on the back side on the front side also there will be a solid shaft which is called as axle so there will be two axles one is called as rear axle and another is called as front axle the purpose of the axle in the basic structure is to bear the load and what are the different types of loads uh, in an automobile axle bears is vertical fore and aft load because sometimes you break the automobile so breaking the automobile does mean that you are shifting the load, load towards the engine front side whereas if you are uh, accelerating uh, the vehicle in that case what you are doing is you are shifting the load towards back okay? and this would cause fore and aft loading of, uh, of the axle and at the same time there would be twisting when you take a turn on some radius with some turning radius you would find that there would be a twisting moment because of the centrifugal force being applied on the axle so the axle is supposed to undergo such kind of loading and uh, therefore it should be designed in such a way that it can bear these loads without undue deflection or deformation okay. there are three types of rear axles uh, generally being used one is called free floating type the second is three quarter floating and the third one is semi quarter floating type of axle here in the diagram you would see that this is an axle which is being connected if you see that the shaft the hinging of this axle is done on the shaft it is not having any connection with the with the uh, V here so you would find that this type of axle is called as semi floating whereas in this case you find the axle is being clamped with the help of a pin joint here inside the tire ring and this type of uh, axle is called as three, four, 3 quarter floating whereas the deflection of the uh, axle because it is completely clamped with a complete um, wheel ring so it is called as full floating so as the tire goes up and down, it floats with the tire up and down. Okay. So this type of uh, uh, these are the three types of axles which are being used in the automobile nowadays. So we were talking about uh, the basic structure. The second part. Uh, in the basic structure there is another important part which is called as wheels and we are going to talk about wheels their constructions in detail because you already know about what does wheel mean and why do we use the wheel so constructions and uh, designing of different wheels we are going to talk about in detail but this is one of the other, this is one of another part which is uh, related to the basic structure the second important components in the initial classification I talked about is the second important uh, component of the automobile is called as power plant and you know that the power plant is something but where the power is being generated so uh, you would find that there are different types of engines being nowadays used and most of them are uh, IC engines which are working based on uh, the gasoline, diesel and nowadays with the advancement the people started using biodiesels and gas based, uh, gas -based engines are also coming, uh, get, getting popularity day by day. There are also automobiles which are, being, uh, which are using power plant or power which are using a technology which generates power by using both fuel and electricity so such type of engines are called as hybrid engine the most promising advancement in, in the uh, engine technology is based on the fuel cells which promises uh, good power generation at the same time with a zero emission uh, emission possibility so the third type of component of the 
Automobile is called as transmission system. And you know that the purpose of the transmission system is to transmit the power from the power plant to the wheels. So there are different components in transmission system and these components would include the clutch, the gearbox, the propeller shaft which connects and uh, differential gears which is uh, being used for giving differential powers to both the wheels. So the functions of the transmission system is to disconnect engine from wheels when desired. So when you want to shift power, increase or decrease torque, transmission to the wheel, you need to uh, disconnect the power of uh, which your wheels are getting from the engine. So you use a clutch. You know, uh, pressing clutch pedal lead to disconnection of the power uh, from the engine to, to the wheels. The second function is to connect engine with wheels, uh, with, with wheels without shock. So when you need to transmit the power from wheels, uh, from, from the engine where it is generated to the wheels, you need to connect uh, the power without any shock. There should not be any jerk. Then the third is to vary the leverage between the engines and the wheels. Sometimes you need very good torque at the wheel, sometimes you need less torque at the wheel because when in the general uh, um, on-road application vehicles, you generally need uh, to run the automobile in fourth and fifth gear where you require less torque and you get better fuel efficiency. So you, you increase the leverage. Whereas in case of uh, where off-road applications where torque is more important uh, because uh, the roads are uneven, so in that case you need to reduce the leverage by changing the gears. So gearbox is another important part which which provides this function to vary the leverage between the engine and wheels. Similarly, the last function of the transmission system is to allow movement of the transmission road with respect to the wheels and engine. So there, there should be any, because there is always a problem of misalignment between the wheel and the road. So wheel is mounted on the road, but this road should move relatively with respect to the wheel. Because with the bumps, sometimes this would go up, this needs to uh, align accordingly. The road needs to align accordingly. So your um, uh, transmission system should be able to accommodate that. Okay. Now, depending on these functions, following components are being used. Uh, the first component is called clutch, second is gearbox, the third one is called universal joint, and the fourth one is differential. Okay. There are different types of transmission system being used. One is called as rear wheel drive, where the power being transmitted to the rear wheels. Okay? Whereas uh, you, you can see here that the engine being used here, the engine is being used here, and with the help of some gearbox, clutches, gearbox, it is being transmitted to the rear wheel with the help of a differential gear by using two universal joints here. And this type of transmission is called as rear. Uh, rear wheel uh, drive whereas the front wheel drive you transmit the power directly to the front wheel so in case of front wheel drive you need not to use this propeller shaft the, the engine is kept on the front and with the help of some gear arrangement you transmit the power to the front front wheel itself so in the, the basic difference between these two technologies is that if you use rear wheel drive, it means that the load you, you are pushing the load uh, in terms of uh, transporting the load. Whereas if you are using the front wheel drive, in that case you are pulling the load. So uh, if you are pushing the load, it, 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 it is helpful when you are climbing the road. Okay? So pushing does give a better traction to the acceleration. Whereas in case of pulling, if you go, because when you pull and there is an inclination, uh, climbing of the automobile, in that case what happens is that the load has a tendency to shift backward. 
so it's, it becomes difficult to pull the load uh, whilst uh, climbing so it does not give you better traction uh, in climbing the road okay and uh, the system also becomes complicated in case of front wheel driven because here you would see that this is the front portion of the automobile is being shown and the engine is being used and is connected with the wheel uh, with the help of some gear and there is no propeller shaft being used okay? so the system becomes complicated on the front side so it becomes difficult to steer the wheels and it, is, it becomes difficult to access different components of, um, uh, of the automobile Okay. And uh, there are another uh, position where the engine is kept on the back and it drives directly on the rear axle and uh, there are transmission system where uh, see here in this case the engine is being kept at the back and it directly drives the uh, rear wheels and there are vehicles which are old Ford driven Generally, in different services, we use uh, uh, all four wheel drives. And in this case, the engine is kept in the middle and transmits with the help of some transfer box, transmits the power to the front as well as to the back. But you have an advantage with this type of that you can make it as a rear wheel drive, disconnecting this transmission. So you have an option to disconnect the transmission of the power to the front side. Okay? Generally, it is being used when you require torque on all the sides, off-road conditions, such situations generally exist where you require large torque at the front as well as the torque at the back as well. So, uh, this type of uh, vehicle is being, uh, this type of drive uh, transmission system is being used. Okay? So, uh, this is a basic uh, introduction about uh, different components of uh, automobile. And in the next lecture, we are going to talk about the, we are going to start with the uh, chassis construction, okay. So we will take up first of all the frame and we will discuss about the designing at the same time, construction and the application part as well. So that we will be doing in the next lecture. Thank you.